During summer 2015, two friends attended a popular festival, a perfect place for young people to socialise, drink and most importantly have fun. By the weekend's end, however, tragedy would strike and many questions would arise. Was a young woman's death accidental or was there foul play? Tonight on Dark Curiosities, the death of Lauren A.G. Lauren Taylor A.G. was a 21-year-old criminal science student from Hendersonville, Tennessee. She was described as being the life of the party and was highly skilled in dance and various other sports. Her mother, Sherry Smith, said that her daughter was so happy at this stage of her life, with her studies going well and had a blossoming relationship with her boyfriend. It was the weekend of the 25th to the 27th of July 2015 when Lauren attended Wakefest, a three-day festival and wakeboard competition, where there was also cliffside diving, camping at houseboats and cabins by the marina, and of course, parties from dusk till dawn. Lauren told her mother that she would be going with her friend, Hannah Palmer, who was more or less a fair-weather friend. Sherry had a strange feeling of foreboding before her daughter departed, hugging her tightly and saying, Lauren, be careful. This would be the last time she would see her. Lauren and Hannah posted updates to social media as they took the trip to Center Hill Lake at Smithfield, Tennessee, raring to go and enjoy a weekend of wild partying. Upon the pair's arrival at Wakefest, they got together with two other friends, Aaron Lilly, who was Hannah's new boyfriend, and his friend, Christopher Stout, whom the girls, according to Lauren's sister, Alison, had never met before. Whilst at the docks, Lauren bumped into Cassie Franks, an old high school friend. Cassie recalled that she was having a good time and definitely had alcohol in her system. Lauren decided that she wanted to try something new, so she found that she wished to try cliff jumping. Cassie told Lauren that she would have to leap out from the incredibly steep cliffs as there were dangerous hidden rocks below. Unfortunately, the jump did not go as planned. Lauren had hit the back of her head and had apparently lost consciousness for a moment. At a bar by the marina later that night, Cassie said that Lauren was in good spirits and seemed well. Lauren, Hannah, Aaron and Christopher remained at the bar for most of the night and according to Cassie, Lauren made it known that she was not in any way romantically interested in Christopher. It appeared that she didn't particularly want to stay drinking at the bar with them and was only really there to endure Chris for the sake of Hannah. Cassie using the term wingman when elaborating on Hannah and Lauren's relationship. The four friends eventually turned in, heading for bed at approximately 2am. Lauren had originally intended on sleeping in one of the cabins, however, she had learned that there was sleeping accommodation upon a narrow cliff where there was a hammock tied between two trees with the lake beneath. Cassie believed that Lauren wasn't keen on the idea and had asked if she could stay the night with her, but there was no space for her. This was the last time Cassie would see Lauren alive. A security officer at the site, Chris Yarchuk, said that he had spoken to them, Lauren was outgoing, whereas her friends seemed quiet and reserved. He witnessed the friends leaving together in a canoe at about 2.30am, and Yarchuk remembers having a bad feeling about it, as they were heading towards a rather dangerous spot whilst intoxicated. At the base of the camp, there is a 90-foot trek up the steep rock using only a thin rope between trees, bushes, jagged rocks and ledges. More festivities take place at the top of the campsite, and at 3am, sleep finally defeats them. There was only a single tent at the clifftop campsite, which was where Hannah and Aaron decided to sleep, leaving Lauren and Christopher to share the hammock. A photograph of Lauren and Christopher on the hammock is believed to be the final photograph taken of her. Waking on Sunday morning, Lauren was nowhere to be seen. Beneath the hammock lay her shoes, phone and various other personal items and at first the remaining friends believed that despite her travelling to the campsite with them on the canoe, she must have returned to the bar. Two hours away in Nashville, Sherry was sick with worry. She had texted her daughter on several occasions, yet there had been no response. Fishermen discovered the body of Lauren Agee hidden away in a cove. 
Dina and Harry Elder, who were employees at the marina, alerted two security officers, one of which was Chris Yarchuk. On his way to the scene, something strange occurred. Yarchuk is quoted as saying, On the way out there, I saw the two boys in a canoe hanging on to a houseboat just waiting, directly looking at where the body was. When we came back, they started screaming, Our friend is missing! Our friend's missing! It seemed staged. Harry Elder backed this claim up, saying, Aaron was in a canoe paddling over there, and he says to me, That could be one of our friends over there. And I think it's odd, because we haven't publicly announced anything about a person in the water. Yarchuk was actually out with his jurisdiction, but noted how the water was a pink colour, and once he set his sights upon AG's body, he mentally logged the trauma inflicted on the deceased, noting, A bunch of trauma and blood on the back of her head, on her left side and her shoulder area. Also, he believed she had a bite mark on her chest. Yarchuk suggested to the authorities that they conduct a rape kit on her. Yarchuk got hold of Aaron, Christopher and Hannah, who were taken in for questioning. Oddly, whilst on the pontoon boat, Aaron snapped at the other two, insisting he tell Yarchuk the story himself, as they were the last people to see Lauren alive. The trio were released after brief questioning. Authorities strongly believe that Lauren Agee's death was the result of an accident where she fell from the cliffs and drowned. The autopsy was conducted and the results only deepened the mystery. The official cause of death was blunt force trauma and possible drowning, despite the fact she had little to no water in her lungs, suggesting she was deceased before being put in the water where she was found floating face down. Her body was not swabbed for DNA and despite Yarchuk's suggestion, no rape kit was carried out. Lauren's blood alcohol level was twice the legal limit. Her thighs were bruised, she had head and shoulder trauma, broken fingers, a broken nose and hemorrhaging in her throat, yet there were no indications of strangulation as her eyes were not bloodshot. These injuries indeed match with that of a fall, however, they could be the result of a fight or struggle. From the autopsy photographs, Yarchuk found that she had an odd imprint on her abdomen in the shape of a 45 degree triangle. Suddenly, it came to him that it was from the bow of a canoe, suggesting the body had been transported from the cliffside to the canoe. Aaron, Christopher and Hannah did not mourn for Lauren and had reportedly stayed at Wakefest and continued partying after her death. Aaron actually posted a chilling update to Instagram, saying, Best weekend ever. None of the trio attended Lauren's funeral, and according to Dina and Harry Elder, their stories kept changing. Despite all of the inconsistencies and suspicions, the DeKalb County Sheriff's Department maintains the view that the three were innocent and that AG's tragic death had been accidental. Sherry Smith believes that her daughter's death was not an accident. Following Lauren's passing, in February 2016, Sherry hired a private investigator, Sheila Vizoki, who believes that Lauren was already dead before being placed in the water, saying that the injuries do not add up. If she had fallen from the cliffs onto the rocks into the water without having her shoes on, her feet would have been torn up like meat. It's not. There's just one little injury on there. Vizoki and Chris Yarchuk conducted dummy tests, and no matter how many attempts were made, it seemed impossible that Lauren had simply fallen from the cliffs to the water, as with each test, the dummy failed to reach the lake. Sherry filed a wrongful death suit against Aaron Lilly, Christopher Stout and Hannah Palmer in order to get them to talk. They all refused, pleading the Fifth Amendment. According to Vizuki, there have been disturbing social media posts appearing online, spreading false information about the case. The account was tracked to the same Florida street that Aaron and Hannah lived on, but nothing ever came of it. Hannah was dropped from the lawsuit and her, Aaron and Christopher are not considered by authorities as being suspects due to lack of evidence. Lauren Agee had her whole life ahead of her. She was working hard towards achieving her dreams, had a loving family, partner and friends, all of whom are left bereft and heartbroken by their loss. Sherry Smith continues to seek answers, saying that she will continue to fight for justice and will never stop in her efforts to find out the truth about what happened to her beloved daughter.